Hi there, this is David Hillier here and I'm going to give you a quick video today on firm valuation. This video wraps up my series on valuation and I'll be covering just a, a three different methods that are used and I'll be doing it very quickly just so that you can get an insight into just the different ways in which uh, companies may be valued. So if we start off with the balance sheet equation. The balance sheet equation is something that um, every accounting student gets and it's, it's effectively it's the debt of a company plus the equity of a company is equal to the value of its assets. And you can look on that in another way that the assets are what is used in the firm and how the operations that um, the company is running creates value and that value is the value of the assets and those assets are funded and they're funded either by debt or they're funded either by equity. In previous videos I've shown you how to value debt and we discount the cash flows from the debt by the cost of debt. I've also shown you how to value equity and you discount the equity cash flows by the cost of equity. And so this video is all about the assets. We are going to value the assets of the company. So we'll take the cash flows of the company and discount them, not by the cost of debt or the cost of equity, but by the cost of the assets. And that is the weighted average cost of capital. Now I do have other videos on the weighted average cost of capital that you'll be able to find on my YouTube uh, finance channel. So let's start off with the very first approach. And the first approach is a simple discounted cash flow analysis. Now you're not going to get this often. What you're basically saying is you're predicting the cash flows of a company into the future. The only time you can really do that is when you know what the company is uh, doing business on, you know about its pipeline, you know about any issues that you think is going to be coming up. So really that will only take place when you are a, a member of that company, when you have proprietary information. And uh, we're going to just, for completeness sake, carry out a cash flow analysis uh, on a company. And, and this company... Uh, has cash flows at the end of uh, year one, it's got cash flows of £5,000 and then for the next five years it's got cash flows of £2,000 and in seven years time, that's uh, after all the, the £2,000 cash flows have uh, taken place, you're going to sell the company for £10,000. So you're asked what's the value of this company, well the, we're saying that the discount rate is 10%, the weighted average cost of capital is 10%. So we effectively just discount each cash flow by 10%, add it up, and that gives us a value for the company. But as I've said, you're not going to usually have these cash flow estimates. And even if you're an outsider, that's going to be really, really difficult because you're, you're just making estimates of what the company is potentially going to do in the future. So it'll be very noisy and not recommended unless you are part of the company. So let's go on to the next step where you don't really have much information and um, you, you only really have publicly available data. And one approach that analysts use is they, they, they compare uh, certain ratios with peer companies peer companies in the same industry. I've used this in, a, in an earlier video and we're going to, let's just look at price earnings uh, ratios and, and look at price earnings multiples and uh, how we compare that to uh, industry multiples. So we start off with an equation that we created and derived in an earlier video in the valuation series and it's the price of an equity is equal to the discounted value of the earnings per share if it's a cash cow. So that's when you're paying out all of your earnings in the form of dividends. So when you pay out all of your earnings in the form of dividends, the dividends are equal to the earnings per share because everything is paid out. So we can value a company just as treating it as a perpetuity, the dividends divided by the discount rate. But you can also say, well, okay, there might be growth in there, the growth opportunities. And so in the, this formula, 
we say, well, the price per share is equal to the value of the company as a cash cow, no in retained earnings, no investment from those retained earnings, plus the net present value of any of the growth opportunities that it has just now and going all the way into the future. These are all discounted back to today. That's why we call it the net present value. And you bring those two together and that gives you the price per share. So if we divide this equation in each of these variables by the earnings per share, we get a really interesting and insightful new equation. And that is that the price per share divided by the earnings, so that's the price earnings ratio, is equal to 1 over the discount rate plus the net present value of the growth opportunities divided by the earnings per share. So it's telling us two things. It's actually telling us uh, three things, but two key things. One is that the price earnings ratio goes down as the company's discount rate goes up. And you know that we equate the discount rate with the risk of the company, so or the risk of the equity. So if the, the equity's risk goes up, that is, the company becomes more risky, uh, then the price earnings ratio will drop. So you, you'll see the price earnings ratios falling when uh, you have more risky industries or uh, risky operations. Now, the second part, which is important, is the net present value of the growth opportunities. When there are more growth opportunities for a company, the price earnings ratio will increase. Okay, so that net present value of the growth opportunities is key because that tells us all about value here. And so what we can do is we can look at industry uh, price earnings ratios and say, well, the industry price earnings ratios are roughly, you know, they, they have companies that have lots of growth opportunities and others that don't have growth opportunities. So that tends to cancel each other out. So you're left with, in a sense, the risk of the industry, which is that component. So that means that any differences in price earnings ratios within a, a certain industry segment will tells you about the growth opportunities for that company. So if your company has a higher price earnings ratio than the industry that it operates in, then that tells you that that company has high levels of growth opportunities in the future. And it's one to keep an eye out for. Similarly, if the price earnings ratios fall, but the industry price earnings ratios stay the same, that tells you that there's information that's come in for a company that, that maybe the, the growth opportunities aren't as good as you expected. So you would look at industry price earnings ratios. Now I've got these ones here. Um, that they're, they're from a book uh, and they change all the time. So don't just take these as the ones that you'll use forever. You find out about the industry price earnings ratios and you can do that using Reuters. In um, the, my previous video, when I was uh, showing you how to read financial information on websites, in the Reuters page, uh, when I, I show you about all the different industry components, you can actually find price earnings ratio rankings in there, and it gives you the, the average price earnings ratio for that industry. Uh, and that's one that you could potentially use, but you can also get it from anywhere, um, any financial website, if you dig hard enough. So you compare your company's price earnings ratio with the average price earnings ratio and um, that will tell you whether the company's a good investment or not. So we're now going to go on to the third approach and that is the free cash flow to the firm approach. In this approach, I would have to say up front, now a lot of people use this because it's tied to the accounting statements. Anything that I've used it, uh, I've got quite different valuations from other methods and I personally haven't found this to be particularly good but that might just be me uh, not being particularly good at it. So let me just tell you where this comes from. So we're, we're looking at cash flows, right? But remember, you might not have details on the company's operations so it means we need to find it somewhere. And the way, what we do is we go to the company's accounting statement. And in the company's accounting statement, there's a cash flow statement. And in that cash flow statement, you have three components. First one is the cash flow from the operations. That's the cash flow that comes from doing the business. The second one is the cash flow from investments. 
that is the investments in uh, buildings and big equipment and plants. Uh, they're what you call capital expenditures. And then you have the cash flow from financing. And that is for where you get from if you have equity issues or debt issues or you borrow money. And when you're looking at the, again, we can go back to the, the balance sheet equation. We are wanting to value the cash flows from the assets, not from the debt or the equity, because that's a separate part. So when we do the free cash flow to the firm method, we're only looking at the cash flow from operations and investments. We want to ignore the financing part, uh, and that gives us the free cash flow to the firm. Uh, now, there's sometimes, now this happens in accounting uh, statements, that sometimes companies will put financing items in under operations as if it's actually part of the business, and we want to strip that out. So we, if you've got a case like in this particular case I'm using, but there can be other cases of finance where they've included interest payments in the operation. So the interest payments are outflows, so it's actually reduced the cash flow of the operations. We want to bring that back in, and uh, so we add it back on to uh, the cash, that, that figure here uh, in this side, and that gives us a free cash flow to the firm. So let me just give you an example. This is BP data, and we're going to value BP using the free cash flow to the firm method. So we have, from the accounting statement, we have the cash flow from operations. Now, these are in millions of dollars, so that's $21 billion. We have cash flow from investing activities, that's buying, and you see that as negative because companies tend to invest, they tend to buy goods, uh, they buy um, the you know equipment, uh, the plant, land, etc., oil rigs in this particular case. So the net investment for BP was 7.8 billion. And then you have the cash flow from the financing activities, which is 10.4 billion. You'll see that that's negative. So that means that BP has actually paid off some of its, either its debt or it's bought back uh, some of its equity. And that's actually quite interesting, buying back some of its equity. Why would that be the case? Well, a lot of companies, instead of paying dividends, they have something called share repurchases. And I'll talk about that in a future video. But those share repurchases are, they're like dividends. Uh, they're, they're similar in a way in dividends and, and a lot of companies have started using share repurchases in instead of dividends, which actually when that happens, it means some of the valuation models that use dividends as the numerator, which is our dividend growth formula, may not actually be fully representative of the company. So that's something to keep in, in mind, uh, just as an aside. Now, in the BP accounts, uh, there were interest payments of uh, $1 billion. Uh, so we're going to have to strip that out from the operations. We add it back in. So you'll see here that the free cash flow to the firm is $21.1 billion, $21 billion minus the, uh, the free cash flow, sorry, let me see, sorry, minus the seven. 0.8 billion dollars which is the investing activities plus the interest payments and remember this is a we've got to do the after tax cash flow because all of these would be after tax uh, remember we, we covered that in the capital budgeting uh, videos so the tax rate is 26 percent so we've got the after tax interest payments and that gives us a free cash flow to the firm of 14 billion dollars that year and we're going to just use the growing perpetuity formula to get the, the value. So we know that the discount rate to the company, not the, the cost of equity, not the cost of debt, but the cost of assets. And the cost of assets is something called the weighted average cost of capital. And it's covered in a different video. Uh, you can do a search on my YouTube channel uh, for that. So the discount rate is 12%. The growth rate we're seeing is 3%. And that's the cash flows to the firm is growing at 3%. So we do this analysis. Have a little look at that. That's just something that sometimes people uh, make a mistake in. This is the cash flow today. But when you take the, the value 
of a growing perpetuity. Remember, the first cash flow occurs one year from now. So we need to make that free cash flow to the firm today grow by one year, which is what we've done there. Doing this uh, calculation gives us the value of BP as being $160 billion. So that's how you use free cash flow to the firm. Very quick approach, but it is a method. So I've shown you in this valuation series, I've shown you how to value equities, value debt, price uh, multiples. Um, we've shown you how to do uh, the discounted cash flow analysis and in this one, the free cash flow to the firm. So that finishes off our series of valuation videos. I hope you found it useful and I'll be back soon with another series of videos this time on financing and I'll be giving an introduction on long-term financing and how companies go about getting uh, new money into the firm. So thank you very much.